How you doing guys? Tenant. Okay. This is my film review for it. I just came out of the theatre. This is the first movie I've watched, like, I don't know in how long, since the end of last year. My thoughts on it in one sentence. The most confusing movie I've watched in recent times. Yes, yeah, so engaging. That's how, <laughs> in one sentence. If there's one thing I know for sure, I wouldn't know how to describe the world of this movie. Is I don't have the intelligence points to like I felt way too many exams to describe this movie to you, but I'm still so engaged because first and foremost is an action thriller movie, right? And I'm just gonna tell you like my four big likes or the four big M MVPs of this movie, and then my one flaw which I've mentioned already that it's confusing but why i still like it in spite of that okay the four mvps of this movie guys the writer and director chris nolan boy <laughs> the, um for making this world and then the editing team and the action team choreography first let me go off and talk about the uh, action specifically the choreography this movie is such a big f you to all of the haters who said chris nolan can't do action what do you mean chris nolan can't do action yes he can now <laughs> 10 years ago different story <clears throat> no, that's what made me sad when this movie opened this movie opens with an action sequence and boy i loved it i hope movies like tenant in terms of the action, define this decade far more than any movie made based on a Marvel and DC character. I get the feeling it won't because those are movies that make millions and billions. But if Chris Nolan will always find a way, you know, it's, he's Chris Nolan. He's one of those guys in in our times. He's in a league of his own. Him, Scorsese, Tarantino. It's only a couple of him outside of superhero movies that make defining like culture cultural moments right and when I, I, the reason why the action just <clears throat> set it off for me from the start is because whether it was a gunfight or a um hand-to-hand -hand, of course chris nolan always films of whites uh this is one, one thing that i liked about dark knight rises it, it does a similar thing but the choreography in dark knight rises is like oh elbows elbows that's how Batman was throughout the trilogy. So when you watch this movie, and the main character's throwing hands, he's actually, he looks like he's punching someone. It's amazing. I was like, what, what am I seeing? Is this a Chris Nolan movie? <laughs> so, <laughs> no disrespect. I love him. But, um, of course, that was one of his blind spots in past movies, right? So, to me, as someone who truly believes that action adds to story it is story to me it's not just a device i truly appreciate um the action scenes in this movie there's i i moving on uh, i was about to spoil something the second biggest mvp and i only say second because you need to plan it first with the with the choreography and then this is where these guys shine the editing team. Oh my goodness, the editing team in this movie. You can tell Chris no Chris Nolan had a vision. And however they storyboarded this, I don't even I don't even know how you could do that. However they storyboarded this, it worked. I boy I just wanna know what Chris Nolan, what's in your mind, man? Like during lockdown uh, he made this before obviously. But what are your influences like books movies music or do you have like a hyperbolic time chamber just like goku in dragon ball z and you just like meditate mm, off the ground and you just say eureka i've got to they start writing on the wall or your hand on some shit what if there were spies who entered your dreams <gasps> oh my god Look. inception and then your your mom or your wife comes in the room and you're saying like, why are you making noise? What's up? I'm in my progress process. Don't interrupt me. Get out. 
Chris Nolan seems like that kind of guy, like a crazy, a mad scientist who deliberately wants to mind fuck you. Like Alex Garland, who wrote Ex Machina and, and adapted and wrote the screenplay for Annihilation, directed it. There's certain people like him, like I said. Because the editing, I, I, I don't, I can't spoil it, but I'll just say, um, The Vault. That's all I'll say. The Vault. Love. And then the um and then yeah that's it <laughs> the opera house I'll say that too I like that scene um what else did I like in this oh yeah obviously I've been talking about Chris Nolan um that he just seems I, 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 I'm gonna watch interviews where I see his influences it was important to me I haven't seen any trailers for this movie. Um, I've only seen images. I know that it's starring Rob Patterson, uh, John David Washington, Denzel's Washington son. Uh, la, 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 la. It has Kenneth Branagh in it. I know that now from watching the movie. Michael Caine, as most Chris Nolan movies do. And the lady, I forget her name, Elizabeth Debicki, who I believe is from The Crown uh, TV series, if you've seen it. I know it has it's starring those actors and is written and directed by Chris Nolan. I couldn't keep some myself from wondering. Speaking of the the third and the joint um, third and fourth place for MVPs, the writing and directing by Chris Nolan it showed that at the end. But I can't help thinking, did John Nolan help you like write this? Did was there any? Not that I don't have faith in your writing abilities. It's just that. This seemed. I don't even know how to say it without spoiling it. Oh, uh, never mind. It seemed like so John Nolan ish. <clears throat> it reminded me of um, the work they've done together on past films, the um, like Interstellar, for example. That it just, I wonder, yeah. But regardless, the writing like. It should be first place, but obviously you need to execute. It's, to me, it's not enough to just create a world as much as that's the beginning. You need to execute that. And that's why the action and editing are the, the highlights of storytelling in this movie for me. And then lastly, I'll just round off with like my views on the acting quick, quickly. David, no, yeah. John David Washington. I really like him as an actor. I've not seen him in anything else. I have Black Klansman on my Netflix list. Uh, I've heard mm, like little impressions of him from other movies, some negative. So I can't imagine from this movie why people would see him as a bad actor, but I've only seen him from this movie. And he seemed great. I really liked him. I like how unassuming he seemed because Chris could have been, Chris Nolan could have been tempted. Uh, shout out to the casting directors in this movie. He could have been tempted with this, with the main character, uh, John David Washington, of casting someone, especially when it comes to black guys, who's like, oh, the sex symbol, Michael B. Jordan, Chadwick Boseman, all these other types, you know what I mean? Like the one that looks solid, mm, you can tell that guy's a a so-and-so type, a, a action star type. He's unassuming, like someone who's playing the kind of character he's playing would be makes perfect sense but then he's up with um he's partnered up a lot in this movie with rob patterson who plays another character he looks dapper he talks regally he uses his natural british accent but i think he's a bit more like regal in the way he talks and actually you know he looks so dapper in this movie i understand why he's bruce wayne he's a new bruce wayne so that makes sense based on his uh fashion sense alone but i like him too in this movie I just can't say why, because it's a big spoiler. Um, same with John David Washington. I can't say why I like those two in particular. Uh, and then with my flaws, lastly, again, this movie is confusing. I feel like I have to watch it a couple of times. Congratulations, Chris Nolan. You have officially made a movie conceptually that hurts my mind more than the Matrix trilogy. Like That's, that's a hard feat. But yeah, you pulled it off. And if if I just understood, I understand 
this movie is sci-fi for a reason. Science fiction means that you need you still need suspension of disbelief. But I have to understand enough about certain concepts, real world concepts in this movie, in order to sort of grab onto uh the whatchamacallit? The 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 suspension of disbelief, the the kind of uh creative license with this movie. I have to understand real world things to understand the 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 mind fucky things. You know what I mean? Uh that what other flaw do I have? Kenneth Branagh's accent. I don't know what what is going on. Kenneth Branagh he's so revered, especially in the UK, my neck of the woods. Uh and he is a great actor. I do love him, but I've seen him in so little outside of just like Harry Potter. So I wouldn't know how amazing he truly is. But it's weird that he has such a like jarring accent in this movie like i'm so self-aware that that's not his his natural way of talking and you'll see it to believe it obviously but when if he, if it does have the same effect on you that it has on me boy that that undercuts a tiny bit the seriousness it's, it's lucky that it's coming out of his mouth and not someone who has less quality experience uh acting Apart from that, also I liked Elizabeth the Becky too. Um, she was obviously the emotional anchor in this movie. I felt some type of way about her uh, when I probably shouldn't have. It's very hard. I've noticed that with stuff to do with, like, uh, I won't even say crime in this movie, but in crime dramas, females who are prominent in that, I I feel like they're so unlikable. I question, oh no, I must just be a sexist. But then I think about justifiable reasons why, and it just makes me sad. Like, justifiable reasons why they seem so unlikable. And it just makes me sad. So, I don't know. Uh, with this movie, it wasn't the same. And that's the power of Chris Nolan's writing and directing and her acting. So, shout out to Elizabeth to Becky. What else? Yeah, my final thoughts. Please watch this movie. It's very, this is the kind of movie that harkens back to like the times where movies like The Fugitive were out, like movies from the 90s and the 80s and so on that I grew up watching because I'm at the right age, right before <clears throat> Super movies got really big in the early 2000s when I was watching TV a lot as a, as a kid and watching these classic thrillers and action movies. And it reminds me of that, but with a twist, right? So... Yeah, shout out to this movie, Tenant. I definitely recommend it. Yeah, engaging but confusing. <laughs> Tell me what you guys think down below. If you like this movie, if you don't like this movie. If you haven't watched it, would you watch it now? And feel free to share this with everyone as much as possible. If you like this, press that thumbs up button. Other than that, salute to you guys. See ya.